Well, congratulations. Ten years completed. Two more in the wings. God bless you and continue to do what you have been doing. We love you and we support you. I just want to offer my congratulations to Reverend Anthony because without his leadership, I don't know where we would be. He's brought in young people. He's brought in people from all different kinds of backgrounds to make what we do more relevant and more important, more essential for the entire community. And I have enjoyed working with him. We've had some wonderful debates over various issues and I admire his commitment, his dedication, his eloquence, and all he has done to uplift and elevate our community. Thank you, Reverend Anthony, for so many years of service and we look forward to many, many more. Now raise your hand if you know President Wendell Anthony. Raise your hand if you've ever worked on any initiative with him. And raise your hand if at the last minute he brings a little curveball in and then switches things up and changes it a little bit. <laughs> so we're going we gonna to go with the flow, and, uh, and I think we will still have a, a very, very joyous occasion. We have a, a very excellent program that is scheduled uh, for us this evening. And as we start our processional before we have our board, we have some very special invited guests who will be with us doing our invocation today. It will be Bishop John Drew Shear, the pastor of Greater Emmanuel Institutional Church of God in Christ. Followed by our Black National Anthem, Ms. Audrey Mavens. Followed by that, we will have our installation of officers in our executive committee by the Honorable Judge Judith E. Levy, the United States District Court Judge of the Eastern District of Michigan. We will have a host of special tributes and remarks, followed by a presidential prayer by the Bishop P.A. Brooks of New St. Paul Tabernacle, Church of God in Christ, followed by the installation of our president by the Honorable Judge Richard H. Bernstein from the Michigan Supreme Court Justice. Followed by our president's installation address and our benediction by the Reverend Milo Reynolds. Let's give all of our special guests a round of applause. Now please join me as we welcome our 2015-2016 executive committee members. Mr. Kevin Tober, the executive director of UAW Ford. Mr. Leon Richardson, President and CEO of Chemical Mays. <laughs> Attorney Kalila Spencer, partner, Hanneman, Miller, Schwartz, and Cohn. Mr. Hyo E. Jackson, CEO, Real Times Media and the Michigan Chronicle, who could not be with us this evening. Ms. Lakeisha Beckton, researcher, UAW. <laughs> Former executive director, Mr. Hester Wheeler, chief innovation officer of Black Family Development. <laughs> the Honorable Rashida Tlaib, community partnerships director with the Sugar Law Center for Economic and Social Justice. <laughs> Kenneth J. Shapiro, President, Consulting Engineering Associates. <laughs> Mr. James Jenkins, Jr., President, Jenkins Construction. <laughs> Mr. Kenneth Harris, President and CEO, the Michigan Black Chamber of Commerce. not be with us this evening. Vice President of Community and Public Relations, Greektown Casino. <laughs> Mr. Michael Turner, Chief of Staff, Wayne County Sheriff. <laughs> Mr. Madassa Tuapu, the Director of Compliance with the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority. <laughs> Ms. Katie Riley, who's unable to be with us this evening. 
Attorney Richard Mack, Attorney Miller Cohn. <laughs> Mr. Willie E. Hampton, past president of SEIU and executive committee member of Detroit NACP. <laughs> Mr. Marvell Cheeks. George B. Barnes, President, Heritage Optical. <laughs> now for our executive officers. Mrs. Indira Glass, our treasurer, CEO of the Glass Drum Incorporated. <laughs> Dr. Shakicha Green, Secretary. Founder and CEO of F2A Madison. <laughs> Ms. Alice Thompson, third vice president, president and CEO of Black County Development Incorporated. <laughs> Mr. James Settles, second president, vice president of UAW4. <laughs> he could not be with us this evening. Mr. John E. Johnson, Jr., I'm sorry, attorney John E. Johnson, Jr., first vice president, executive director of the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus. And ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure announcing his 12th term, uh, unprecedented, on his way to 24 years, our president, the Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony. <laughs> from the Bishop John Drew Shear, the pastor of Greater Emmanuel Institutional Church of God in Christ. Bishop. May we bow our heads. Dear Lord, we have gathered here today to celebrate what you have done in our midst this occasion comes to us in such a critical time when it seems to be the consensus of our world to have no respect for the progress that we made and if possible to turn back the hands of time that this organization has labored so intensely to bring us to. We pause today to not only say thank you for what you've done, but to say thank you as we fight on for the cause that has been spelled out by our founding fathers. We now pray, O oh God, and invoke your presence upon this setting that we will not only remember what has been done, but that we will meet the challenges of our day. We pray for these officers that you will bless them in a special way, give them the grace to answer the call and rise to the occasion of what you call them. God, we pray that you will help them and that your presence will be felt in a special manner as we pray for every home that is represented here in our city and community at large. And we ask that you will bless all of us in a special way in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we will have our Black National Anthem sung by Miss Audrey Maiden. Line audible by Miss Maya Anthony. Oh. 
the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory. Maya Anthony and that talent. Let's give her another round of applause. Sometimes you just have to be ready in the world of the NACP. We thank you for always being ready. Amen. I certainly, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, a few people before we continue with our program. If you would join me, uh, our team, our staff has been very uh, tirelessly working to make tonight a reality. If you would join me in thanking them for their hard work this evening, for this together. Uh, uh, Miss Lori Moore and Miss uh, Camilla Landry who did a very excellent job in making tonight a reality. We say thank you. So to the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank for hosting us. They've been a gracious host, not just today, but on many occasions, and we certainly thank them. Uh, for not only hosting us, but giving it to us, not all the way free, but, but for making sure that we can have a nice venue. Let's thank the bank, uh, Chicago Federal Reserve Bank. And certainly to the family of our board members who are with us today, uh, thank you for lending your loved ones to us. Uh, this is certainly a labor of love, and over these next two years, I don't know what the fights will be, but the fight is a guarantee. Uh, that we will be working together very tirelessly. And so we thank you, the family, for your support uh, for them in this mission because this is the over and beyond the work that they do. And certainly to our corporate friends and community friends and elected officials uh, who are with us, many of you have sent kind words and unfortunately we won't be able to read all of them this evening, uh, but we will highlight some of those who have shared uh, some very gracious remarks as we move through the program. Uh, at this time, uh, before we get to some of those special tributes and remarks, it is with great pleasure and distinction that I invite the Honorable Judge Judith E. Levy, our United States District Court Judge of the Eastern District of Michigan, to install our executive officers. If our officers would join the court, please. Thank you very much, Donnell. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity to be here, and I'd like to thank everyone who invited me to assist in administering the oath of office. Before I do so, I'd like to take just one moment to add my voice to this evening's important event. Now that I'm a judge, I've learned a few important things, and one of them is that I get to say something uh, without asking for too much permission. Although I did ask Don Elway whether I could say a few extra words. I'll be, I'll be very brief, if it pleases the court. Thank you. Um, I recently had an opportunity to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 44. He said, Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. I am not educated in the Bible, but I've read Martin Luther King Jr.'s sermon on this particular passage, and I think it's relevant to your installation and core mission of the NAACP. At a time like now, when there is so much unrest and exposure of continued racism in this country as laid bare by the killing of Michael Brown, Eric Garner, and others. Martin Luther King Jr. said about this passage in the Bible on November 17, 1957, and it rings true today. He said, the words of this test glitter in your eyes with a new urgency. Far from being the pious injunction of the utopian dreamer, this command is an absolute necessity for the survival of our civilization. 
Yes, it is love that will save our works and our civilization, love even for your enemies. As you take this oath of office today, I know from my own experience and understanding of history that the work of this organization has, has shaped this country in many ways, in more ways than many of us can articulate, through love of country, love of freedom, and a burning passion for equality. The NAACP, I believe, has saved this country and helped to build it up. There's a great deal more work to be done for our democracy to survive, as Reverend King put it. I am now prepared to swear in the officers, and uh, I ask that uh, you raise your right hand, and please repeat after me. On this 29th day of January 2015, on this 29th day of January 2015, I solemnly promise Promise. To uphold the duties and responsibilities of executive officers. As set forth by the Detroit branch NAACP. As set forth by the Detroit branch NAACP. And in accordance with the Constitution and bylaws. In accordance with the Constitution and bylaws. Of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. By the powers vested in me by the United States of America and the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the executive officers of the Detroit branch NAACP. So if the executive committee will stand and raise your right hand. Okay, I was thinking, remember when President Obama got uh, sworn in the first time? I was going to try to do this sort of a shorter way so that we don't run into any problems with this that he ran into that first time. But let's do it the formal way. Uh, so please repeat after me. On this 29th day of January 2015, on this 29th day of January 2015, I solemnly promise, I solemnly promise to uphold the duties and responsibilities of executive committee members. To uphold the duties and responsibilities of executive committee members. Set forth by the Detroit branch NAACP. Set forth by the Detroit branch NAACP and in accordance with the Constitution and bylaws. And